Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we are going to do a quick intro on a fragrance that gets zero talk on YouTube. Actually, this house gets almost zero talk on YouTube and um, I had so much fun wearing this fragrance and testing it so far. I've worn it to bed a couple times. I'm wearing it as my scent of the day today. And uh, it's a house and a fragrance that basically, to me, gets disrespected on YouTube just because no one talks about it at all. Zero. Um, if you look up the house, you'll find some interviews from the designer himself. I know uh, Super Jacob and a couple other people really rate his eye for fashion and design. He's been doing this since 1968. He had the pleasure of, um, I think, designing like an outfit for the Pope in 1997, if I'm not mistaken. And... Um, he has also dressed some famous people, uh, Lady Gaga and stuff like that. And his name is Jean Charles de Castlebajac. Now, every time I say that word, I think of the lady from um, uh, Austin Powers, where she says, "Send in the gods." I just imagine Castlebajac. For some reason, I just can't help myself. But um, outside of the childish quips, I will tell you that this is an absolutely fantastic fragrance. But before we get into it, actually, while I'm just kind of talking about some other things. I'm going to give myself a fresh spray. This atomizer just dumps juice on you, by the way. It's like one of those where you spray and it just like, you know, fires as long as you hold the trigger. Um, and so there you have it. Uh, I'm really enjoying this though. This is uh, my kind of stuff. It does kind of drip everywhere because it's not the best atomizer. But uh, I do have to give a special thank you to Armando for supplying me with this. Because here's the thing, before I do a quick unboxing, thanks to another friend, uh, Hari sent me some uh, samples that uh, I'm going to unbox for you guys real quick. I just want to say something about the state of FragCon, because while everyone else is rushing to get their new Nishan A X review out, or Louis Vuitton, the latest Louis Vuitton fragrance that smells like the last 50 that they've done, and it's like a Russian FragCon to uh, steal views and eyeballs and, and you know, they're in this never-ending rat race of trying new stuff. I'm doing something different or I want to be doing something different. This is the stuff, stuff like this, whether you actually end up ever getting to smell this fragrance or not. As a true fragrance connoisseur, uh, trying, just running out and getting the newest thing just because it's new is not what it's about in this game. Trust me. Uh, it's not. It's it's it you will never be fulfilled playing that game. The I think secret to uh really enjoy continuing to joy enjoy yourself in the long run in the fragrance game is going backwards because oh fuck. When you know, whenever you smell something like this, uh and I'll tell you kind of the the category it's in, we'll talk about the fragrance itself, we'll talk about the house a little bit. But before we get into that, I do want to just do a quick little unboxing of some decants that were sent to me by Hari. I want to see what he sent me because he sent me some pretty cool stuff apparently uh, and I love just to be able to get my nose on things that I wouldn't be able to thanks to friends in the community. Uh, again, Armando and, and Hari, um, people like that are just absolutely amazing and vital to um, and even the people who want to remain anonymous. I have a lot of perfume god people, as I call it, who very kindly sent me stuff that they just don't want the limelight. So, um, so yes, this is, uh, let's see what he sent me. Let's get the old handy dandy unboxing knife out. Let's see what he sent me, and then we'll talk about this Jean Charles de Castlebajac. Um, so this is a... This, actually, this is pretty cool. This is actually really cool. What is this? Um, so, this says... Man, I have no clue. I have no clue what this is. Uh, this is... Al-Sharif Oud? Are you guys familiar? I don't know this, actually. It, uh, I feel a little bit embarrassed that I don't know it. But I don't. Um, Al Sharif Oud, Al Batal Atik to the Holy Sanctuary. I don't know. I don't know about anything about this brand, but I can tell you that the box makes it look expensive. Um, I'll look this up here in just a second. But it also came with this. Look at this. Is that? 
Is that uh, Al Sharif Oud Rare Vintage Bahor? Ooh, I'm going to have to burn that. It smells amazing through the little packaging. Good stuff. I have never actually burned real Bahor, so that'll be cool. And this, Al Sharif Oud Al Batal Al Atek. Let's see if I can look this up. Just out of curiosity, while we're just sort of kicking the shit here, as I like to say. Uh, Al Sharif Oud. Sharif Oud. Ah, it is. It's on Parfumo. Okay, so Al Batal. He's got a lot of stuff. Al Sharif Oud. Al Batal Al Attack 2. Here it is. It's a new release, 2023. Um, I guess these are just Atars of Oud themselves. Very cool. Very, very cool. I am I am really getting into Oud, so that is more than enough to do a video for you guys. Um, the Holy Sanctuary. Interesting. Good stuff. Thank you. You'll go up there when the uh, with the decants at the front of the line, getting ready to be tested. Uh, nice little box. Nice little, nice little presentation. Uh, okay, next on the list we have this little bad boy, which is filled with some decants. And once I get my, uh, I've got a rare Guerlain that's on the way from Paris. And once it gets here, I am going to turn around and send Hari a decant of some of that juice. He's been wanting to smell it. I'm going to send him some Guerlain decants back, just waiting on that bottle to arrive. Um, so, what he sent me here, we have a bunch of little decants. We have um, Sunset Hour by Goldfield and Banks, a brand I've never actually talked about on the channel, to be honest with you. Um, Goldfield and Banks Sunset Hour is a 2021 release, a fruity sweet fragrance. My guess is this is not going to be for me. Um, but I hear they do this type of perfumery quite well, this sort of synthetic fruity thing. So, you know, I'll give it a chance, I guess. Um, ah, Uncut Gem by Frederick Mall. I get to see if everyone else is, uh, you know, if it's as bad as they've made it seem. Uncut Gem, that's awesome. Can't wait to do an Uncut Gem video. That's one that I've been dying to smell. And, and I really want to smell the new Heaven Can Wait by Jean-Claude Elena by Frederick Mall. That's coming out in the next couple months, apparently. And um, so that's that's exciting stuff. And then we've got, ah, the new zoologist, Tiger. All right, I can do a video on it. I've been, I've been wanting to smell that. I know Eugene really liked that fragrance um, when he got a chance to smell it before it was released. So this is uh, spicy, woody, saffron, cardamom, kumquat, frankincense, carrot seed, jasmine, sambac, vetiver, ebony, and papyrus. It actually sounds like something I would like. Victor Wong said it may not be challenging enough for my taste, but um, I'm willing to willing to try. Uh, Christian Louboutin, in my Texas accent, uh, we call this Laboutin as a joke. Come on down to the Laboutin show. Um, Christian Louboutin, this is Luby Rouge, Luby Rouge, uh, I'm sure this is one of those with the outrageous gaudy, uh, caps, Luby Rouge is a 2020 release with cardamom, iris, and vanilla, um, Puige apparently makes these, and I think they are ridiculously expensive, there's, uh, the cap is like a woman's uh, high heel shoe that the the uh, Louboutin like red bottom shoes, uh, standing on like a globe or something is the cap with like a spiked collar. That's class right there. In case you didn't know, um, and then we've got Luby Charm, Luby Charm. This is cool because it lets me uh, potentially, if I decide to do videos on a new house I never talk about, new fragrances, you know, I, I'll never buy stuff like that. So decants of that is awesome. Uh, Luby, what is this? Luby Crown, Luby Kiss, Luby Funk. Where's Luby Charm? Luby Rouge? Is there no Luby Charm? Luby Charm, 2021. Christophe Reynaud is the perfumer. 
and the cap is an elegant looking beetle with fiery wings. Um, frankincense, geranium, patchouli, and rose is that one. And then we have um, Rogue Perfumery's Targi Forest. This is the new Rogue Perfumery um, fragrance. I know about that one. I've been wanting to smell it because I hear really good things about it. Targi Forest from 2023. And I really like the House of Rogue. Um, I just kind of went with their older stuff when they first came out. And then I never really continued to buy any of the new stuff, but I do have decants of some like Vetti Flor and some I haven't talked about on the channel yet. So I need to, I need to do some of those videos, just a matter of time. Amber, cedarwood, cist, cist, citrus notes, fir, balsam, geranium, juniper, berry, musk, oak moss, patchouli, pine, and sagebrush. Um, this, this looks really good. This, this, from the note listing and what I know about uh, Manny Cross as a perfumer, I think he probably did something pretty special there. So I'm excited about that. Uh, Synthetic Jungle, which I actually have a review on the channel on already. If you want to check out my review on Synthetic Jungle, you can do that. I'll put this one over here since I already reviewed that one. And then we've got uh, Joram Studio Pony Boy XDP. I've never heard of that. Pony Boy. What a name. Pony Boy. Uh, Joram Studios. There we go. Pony Boy. Joram Studios. Um, 2022 release. Fruity and Green Scent. Made by Juan McCall. Never heard of him or her. Uh, Beetroot, Calamus, Pink Grapefruit, Pink Lotus, Absolute, Rhubarb, Bediver, Ambrette Seed, which I love. Atlas Cedar, Champaca, Absolute, Raspberry Leaf, Pink Pepper Fig, Coriander Seed, and Virginian... Cedar. Interesting. Pony Boy. Joram Studios. Never heard of this brand before. And then we have uh, Dia Woman, which I actually have a um, video on, but not an individual video, actually, on my live stream where I tested all the the um, Amouage Women's fragrances together. There's some talk about Dia Woman there. And then we've got... Uh, Heidi Slimane Crema di Latte. So apparently Heidi Slimane has his own house, which I did not know that, to be honest with you. Uh, Crema. There's just too much. There's just too much crap. There's just too much crap for everyone to keep up with nowadays is the problem. Um, so yes, Crema di Latte, a gourmand sweet fragrance. Uh, I'm guessing I'm going to hate this. Heidi Slimane. Heidi... Solani. Wait a minute. That's not Heidi Slimane. That's Heidi Solani. I guess I should learn to read. Heidi Sl Solani. Okay. Um, milk, sugar, caramel, vanilla, cinnamon, and lemon. I'm still guessing I'm going to hate that. But um, we will put that on the list of things to discuss. And then we've got uh, Goldfield and Banks Ingenious Ginger. Ingenious Ginger. Um... Ingenious Ginger. That came out this year. Uh, fresh and fruity. Amber, Australian, ginger flower, bergamot, cashmeran, Chinese magnolia, jasmine, lemon, mandarin, orange, musk, patchouli, rose, sandalwood, and vanilla. Hamad, Hamid Marathi Kashani is the perfumer. Um, his big claim to fame, if you don't know, is Leighton and Pegasus. Leighton Exclusive, Percival and Pegasus Exclusive. So he's a parfums to Marley. Perfumer. He also did a caster from them, um, and he did a fragrance Dubois fragrance or something like that. So he's okay. Um, I actually do like Layton, to be fair. And then we have Papillions. Ah, Hera. I already have a review of Hera on the channel, but this is fantastic stuff. You uh, do not overlook Hera because she made that for her daughter's uh, wedding as a man. I absolutely love it. Hera is, uh, is stunning. Ambrette and Iris. And then finally, we have Mona de Oreo's Bohea Boheme. Um, let's see if I can spell this. B-O-H-E-A. Bohea Boheme. 2016 release. Uh, black tea. Shishwan pepper. Balsams. Chamomile. Juniper. Pop poplar. Bud. Absolute. Fir balsams. Guyac wood. Hay. Oak wood. Amber. 
Bay Leaf Absolute, Beeswax Absolute, Boxwood Absolute, Cardamom Absolute. As I dropped it, let's see if I can pick it up without running it over. Uh, Florentine Iris, Indian Sandalwood, Italian Bergamot, Osmanthus Absolute, and Geranium Absolute. Okay, so those are awesome. Um, thank you, my friend. I very much appreciate that, Hari. You are giving me some great content to do. Everyone who sends me something, I tell them the exact same thing. Please be patient. I've got a million and one samples to get to, and I go, I don't really have much of a plan. I just sort of attack uh, by whatever, I talk about whatever I feel like talking about. Sometimes that leads to crazy little um, tangents, like we had a Reese Ladori week where I did an entire week reviewing a Reese. Sometimes we, you know, do lists a lot. Sometimes we do live streams. Sometimes we don't do live streams. Sometimes I talk about these a year or two later. Um, or sometimes I grab one and just talk about it tomorrow. So if you've sent me something, I'll say the same thing I've said previously. Please just be patient. I will get to it. Uh, it's just a matter of time. But thank you for keeping me well stocked. I'm going to put these right here because otherwise they will get lost in the shuffle. Um, there's already stuff up here that's lost in the shuffle. But I'm going to put these here anyways, and otherwise I will forget about them. So bear with me while I put these up here, and then we will talk about what we wanted to talk about today. And that is a new fragrance for me, but not a new fragrance, because again, it came out in 1988, and again, it is... John Charles de Castle Bajac, so JCC number two, if you will. And if you turn it over on the back, you might see that this bottle was made in West Germany. Uh, so, um, Mulhers was the final dis distributor, if you will. Um, Ferdinand Mulhers, and um, so you know this is an older bottle, first of all, because of the West Germany attachment to it. And so, again, I'm not an expert on the scent yet. This is a video more to bring it to the attention of FragCom, because when you search for the name Jean-Charles de Castelbajac, there's really nothing that comes up about perfume. Actually, my 1988, excuse me, uh, this year in perfume highlighting fragrances from the year 1988, the fact that I actually put this as one of the fragrances makes it come up, but that video actually comes up when you search for his name as a designer. But it's interesting because the house is still doing fragrances. They have a release from a fragrance that came out um, a couple years back, and they have a release, so they have stuff that came out. Um, John Charles de Castelbajac. Um so they have stuff that came out as early as 2022. I see I see some 21, 2020. Castle Bajac Alm came out in 2019, which I'm sure is not very good. It's not fair to it, me guessing that, but I'm guessing because it's a new release, it's not very good. Um, so and I instantly went to the old stuff. And as soon as I smelled this, I blind bought the um, fragrance made for men from 1982 called Jean Charles de Castle Bajac. Um, they did an eau de cologne and an eau de toilette. I found a bottle of the eau de toilette at a fair price and blind bought it because that's the kind of stuff that I, that I really like to go for. So what is this? Why am I so excited about, uh, a women's fragrance from 1982, 1988, I'm sorry, the men's fragrances from 1982. Um, and, but why am I so excited about a fragrance from, from 1982? Well, this is basically a... Out and out. This is the Eau de Parfum, by the way. They also have an Eau de Toilette, and I believe they might even have a Pure Parfum. Um, and But if you actually look up JCC number two, John Charles de Castelbajac JCC number two on eBay, on uh, YouTube, you'll find the advertisement of like a, like a German advertisement that they ran in the early 90s. So the fragrance, I think, only lasted about five or ten years, and then it was discontinued. Um, but the reason that I'm so excited about this, and there's the little blurb on the inside if you would like to read it, not too much uh, said about it. It says, a distinctly feminine fragrance, which I disagree on, whose emphatic heart of flowers and fruit is set against a background of enticing and exquisite sensuality. Okay, so sensuality is a good word to describe this scent because this is a proper shebra. And if you want sort of a rundown on the Sheepra category. I have an entire video 
multiple videos actually based on it. This is not a top 10 Sheepra. This is not a top 10 ranked Sheepra video where I actually ranked my favorite Sheepras. And one of my all time favorite Sheepras, well, there's a couple of them, but one of them is Diagolev. I absolutely adore Diagolev. And Diagolev takes some serious leeways with this very sexualized nature. There's this dirty human and this animalic, um, almost like a poised, Liz Moore's when we came, when she came on my channel and talked a little bit about her creation of Salome, which is a completely different fragrance, but it still has this sexual nature to it. She called it sex on the skin. She also called it a post-coital fragrance, okay? Uh, post-coital fragrance sounds very professional. Sex on the skin sounds dirty. This, both of these sort of fall in that category, if you will. This is a dirty, leathery, animalic uh, Sheepra that is radiant. It's bright. The fruit notes in it are stunning. They're absolutely stunningly done. Um, the fruit notes in this are out of this world. I love the whatever fruitiness here mixed with that green galbanum and al old school aldehydes in the opening. And Sheepra's, you know, everyone has their own category, I think, that they really love. For me, it's Sheepra's because Sheepra's really have this mysterious dark side to them. They have this mossy undertone. And the oak moss in this this is what frag heads go crazy for, you know, stuff like this, because this is what is missing nowadays. This sort of a fragrance that has some balls, you know, a fragrance that, and it's funny me saying that about a feminine fragrance, but it's true. That's how I feel. Um, I couldn't tell you the development yet because I really don't know it well enough. And I don't know if I have enough juice to know it well enough yet, but I will tell you that on an early impression and it's been on my skin now for about five, five and a half hours, let's say, as my scent of the day today. And that leathery character does come forward, as does some, some woods, but the animalic bits, the, the labdanum and the castorium, and this really feels like, you know, and somebody like Roja who knows perfume history, I've often said that this, you know, Diagolev is sort of like a blend of Mitsuko, which is one of the greatest sheepers of all time. Apparently, a news told me this is a late 70s bottle of uh, Mitsuko with the heart on the front. It's absolutely stunning, this Parfum de Toilette version. It is unbelievable. One of the best fragrances I've ever smelled in my entire fragrance career, hobby, if you will. Um, not that it's a career, it's a hobby. But, um, you know, in, in all of my journeys and searching and looking and trying to find new fragrances that you just so easy to come back to Mitsuko and say this is the seminal Sheepra. This is it for me. Now Rochas Femme also competes obviously for the top spot. There's many Sheepras that I really love. Um I love Diagolev as well. I mean wearing this is uh I mean I just I just love the nature of it and you know how um it develops and and it and just everything about Diagolev really appeals to me. And wearing JCC2, I felt exactly the same way from the get-go. My only complaint is I wish the opening lasted just a little bit longer. Um, but man, those animalic castorium notes start to come out with the leather in the base, that you know, slightly metallic castorium, the warmth, and castorium adds this unbelievable warmth to a fragrance. And then you mix it with the, with the real oak moss that was in these older bottles. Um, and just the, I don't know who the perfumer was, but they created just a beautiful, complex, spicy, fruity, floral Sheepra. The florals are turned up a little bit. So you're going to notice old school carnation. You're going to notice sort of this jasmine that's slightly indolic, because remember, this is slightly a sexualized version of a Sheepra. You're going to notice this rose, this ylang ylang, iris, lily of the valley, beautiful floral heart. For some guys, that may be a little bit much. For me, in a sheepra construction like this, where there's so much else going on, sheepras are like the most complex fragrance type to me. You know, where I can get the patchouli, which there's definitely a lot of patchouli anchoring this down. There's this, so that mossiness in the base makes it lean more masculine to me, although the floral heart, may, some may say, makes it lean slightly feminine. I think this is right down the middle. Unisex, I think it, it uh, could easily be worn by men and women nowadays. And, um, you know, everything about it, as a, as a fragrance lover, you know, this is the kind of thing that I want to talk to you guys about. Fuck the new Nishane, as far as I'm concerned. Um, do I care about testing the new Hachivat X? No. Hell no. 
Uh, would I smell it and do a video for you guys? Sure, but am I gonna smell it and go run out and buy it? Probably not, is my take. This is the stuff that I'm gonna tell you to hunt for as a fragrance lover. Um, this is the stuff that moves me anyway. It's close to my heart. These vintage fragrances, uh, really, you can, you, I can feel the passion coming out of me when I, when I get to smell these old vintage fragrances. And it doesn't matter how many new aroma molecules they create. It just doesn't matter, you know, all of the new amazing compounds that the oil houses are working day and night to trademark and copyright so that they can, you know, make money on it for decades. I, you know, forget all about that. Just go back to the past. Enjoy what perfumery used to be. And this is a joy for me. This is a pure joy to get to know and wear. And that's the thing, again, that I love about vintage perfume is no matter how much you think you know, no matter how many bottles you have, no matter what you've smelled, there's always something else to discover in vintage fragrances. It's like there's a never ending pool of vintages and it seems like they never let me down. That's the thing about vintage fragrances is it seems like they just never let me down no matter how many new ones I discover that are in the shadows, whenever you bring them to the light, the vintage fragrances are just stunning the way that they um, unfold and develop in the quality of the materials and the way that it, everything got put together back then and how they weren't worried about offending somebody. They didn't have to be fluffy and cloudy and soft. They could be butch and baroque and challenging and animalic and... Um, you know, it, it was just a sign of the times back then. And I love the time machine aspect of this, that even though I was just a very small child when this came out, and even though this is marketed towards women, I absolutely adore stuff like this. So I just wanted to do a quick video sort of highlighting uh, Jean-Charles de Casalbajac. Uh, um, I can't say that without saying it like that anymore. But um uh, try to get your nose on this if you can. I think my brother Armando is selling one on eBay right now. Outside of that, I don't see very many out there. You'll see them popping up from time to time. But um, this is the kind of stuff that I think there's a hole in Fragcom. And the hole in Fragcom to me is that you've got these channels falling over themselves to put out content about the new Roja Elysium O Intense, you know, because they got their free bottle brigade. Um, and falling over themselves to put out the new Louis Vuitton and, and new Nishane. But very few people are doing this because this doesn't bring in the, the hordes of new subscribers and views and all of that. But screw that. You know, I like growing, going against the grain anyways. This is the kind of content that I would say I'm most proud bringing to YouTube. So uh, if, if this inspires even one person to hunt down a bottle of this and they love it as much as I do, it's a win for me. Taking the half an hour to do the video is a win. And thank you to Hari for the for the uh, decants. Thank you to Armando um, for, for setting me up with this. And uh, it's been a pleasure getting to wear this as my scent of the day today. So uh, thanks everyone for the support, being here, watching, commenting, all the amazing things that you guys do. It's a pleasure getting to do these videos for you guys. So cheers, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.